hello students welcome back now we are going to discuss about regarding light source materials okay light source materials so actually coming to this materials okay so the materials can be divided into three types like conductors semiconductors insulators right so in these uh, three materials right material types we are taking the semiconductors okay the semiconductors can be divided into two types here the semiconductors can be divided into two types first one is of direct band gap materials second one is of indirect band gap materials okay semiconductors can be divided into two types first one is direct band gap materials second one is indirect band gap materials so for these light source materials okay for these light source materials we are taking the direct band gap materials okay the semiconductor materials that are used for the optical sources are the direct band gap semiconductors in which the electrons and holes can recombine directly across the band gap okay in direct band gap materials the electrons and holes can recombine directly across the band gap so that in case of direct band gap material there is a high radiative recombination is there okay there is a high radiative recombination because of this electrons and holes uh, recombine with each other so that it is having high radiative recombination is there it is useful to produce the level of optical emission okay it is used to reproduce the level of the optical emission it is very sufficient okay that's why we are taking the direct band gap materials so we can say that for the light source materials we are taking the direct band gap materials why because that is having the high radiative recombination okay that is sufficient to the to produce the optical emission okay hence we, we are using the direct band gap materials for the light source materials okay so for these light source materials okay for these light source materials we use some recombination of the materials okay that can be binary right or ternary or quaternary okay so the most important uh, of these are third to fifth group materials so if you see here third and fifth group materials so that are useful for the light source materials which are uh, having the direct band gap materials so in these materials okay coming to the third group material so we are using the aluminium gallium indium okay that is the that are the that are of third group material aluminium gallium indium next whereas the fifth group materials that are of phosphorus arsenic strybdenum phosphorus arsenic strybdenum so these uh, materials combined combining by these uh, materials okay we are going to use for the uh, light source materials okay that can be either binary compounds or ternary compounds right or quaternary combinations okay we can use these things right so we can say that from this one the third group and fifth group elements or materials are used for the light source materials okay remember this point for the light source materials we are using the direct band gap materials and that are of third group and fifth group materials are using okay that can be either binary compounds or ternary or quaternary combinations fine so that is regarding light source materials fine next next one is here this figure shows the band gap energy and output wavelength as a function of aluminum mole fraction for aluminum gallium arsenic at room temperature here x shows mole fraction okay in this one x shows the mole fraction so here we are going to use this al gallium aluminum and the arsenic for the operation in 800 to 900 nanometer spectra okay for operation in 
800 to 900 nanometer spectrum. So if you see here the direct and indirect band gap, okay. So this figure shows, this one, this graph shows direct band gap materials regarding, and here indirect band gap materials. Fine. So that one is regarding band gap energy and output wavelength as a function of aluminium mole fraction for aluminium gallium arsenic at room temperature. <coughs> Next one, the width of the spectral pattern at its half power point, okay, the width of the spectral pattern at its half power point is known as the full width half maximum, okay, full width half maximum spectral width, okay, once again I am repeating, the width of the spectral pattern at its half power point is known as the full width half maximum spectral width so in this one the x okay the ratio x that uh, determines the band gap of the alloy okay the band gap of the alloy and correspondingly the wavelength of peak emitted radiation okay the ratio here the mole fraction x uh, that determines the band gap of the alloy okay and correspondingly the wavelength of the peak emitted radiation Okay, that is the use of here, the x here. Okay, x shows the mole fraction. Fine. Next. Next here, the spectral width of full wave half maximum. Okay, full width of maximum for the ratio of x taken to be 0 0.08. Okay, the spectral width of full wave half max full width half maximum for the ratio of x taken to be 0 0.08. For this ratio, the maximum peak output power occurs at 810 nanometers. So if you see this figure, okay, the maximum power occurs at the 810 nanometers. So here the peak is there, right? So it is, that is occurs at 810 nanometers. So this figure shows the spectral emission pattern of a representative gallium aluminium arsenic as LED with x equal to that is the ratio x equal to 0 0.08. So the width of the spectral pattern at its half power point is 36 nanometers if you see in this figure right it shows the shown it as the half power width that can be of 36 nanometers so this graph is drawn between relative output power and then emission wavelength that is in terms of nanometers right so at the 810 the maximum peak occurs here occurs here suppose at the longer wavelengths Okay, at longer wavelengths, the quaternary alloy that is indium, gallium, arsenic, phosphorus. Okay, the quaternary alloy, indium, gallium, arsenic, phosphorus is one of the primary material. Okay, at longer wavelengths, the quaternary alloy, indium, gallium, arsenic, phosphorus is one of the primary material. So, in this graph, okay, in this graph, by varying the mole fraction okay the by varying the mole fraction x and y in the active area the leds with peak output powers that can be between 1.0 to and 1.7 micrometers okay by varying the mole fraction x and y in x and y the leds can get the peak output powers at any of values of 1.0 and 1.7 micrometers that we can get by varying these mole fractions fine so to fabricate these light source materials we are going to use gallium allium, aluminium arsenic and indium gallium arsenic phosphorus that are chosen to make it as semiconductor light sources okay the alloys gallium aluminium arsenic and indium gallium arsenic phosphorus that are to be chosen as the semiconductor light sources
okay so because it is possible to match the lattice parameter okay it is possible to match the lattice parameter here so the combination of binary and ternary quaternary materials that can be used for this making of light source materials next one this equation shows the fundamental quantum mechanical relationship between the energy and then frequency okay this shows the equation for the fundamental quantum mechanical relationship between the energy capital e and the frequency nu here okay so we can write it as e equal to h nu where it is nu can be written as c by lambda okay next here the peak emission wavelength that is the lambda here peak emission wavelength in micrometers that can be expressed as a function of band gap energy that is in terms of eg in electron volts by this equation that is of lambda of micrometers equal to 1.24 by eg that is in terms of electron volts so the peak emission wavelength of lambda okay that is of lambda that can be expressed in eg okay that is lambda of micrometers equal to 1.24 by eg of electron volts so in this way we can express the peak emission wavelength next the full width half maximum okay the full width half maximum spectral widths of led in the 800 nanometers region or around 35 nanometers here okay the full width half maximum power spectral widths of led in 800 nanometer region or around 35 nanometers here and increases in longer wavelength that is of 1300 to 1600 nanometers then the spectral widths vary from around 70 to 180 nanometers 70 to 180 nanometers that can be shown in this figure right so if you see this figure those the spectral width here so it is of having 75 nanometers right and it is having the 125 nanometers right so this figure shows the relative output power and then wavelength this figure is drawn between wavelength and then relative output power so this dotted lines okay whatever the dotted lines shown here that can be show that shows the surface emitting led and the thick line whatever the drawn thick line here that line is of edge emitting led okay that is the pattern for edge emitting led so this graph is drawn between the wavelength and relative output power so this figure shows for edge emitting and surface emitting led set 1310 nanometers okay 1310 nanometers that is of wavelength here right so from this figure we can conclude that the width of the surface emitting led is more than the edge emitting led okay the width of the surface surface emitting led the led is more compared to the edge emitting led that is the output spectral width okay whatever the width here mentioned 75 nanometers and 125 nanometers that is of the output output spectral width here so that is regarding your light source materials so in which we use mostly the third group and fifth group materials that is like third group element elements like aluminum gallium indium and fifth group elements phosphorus arsenic and strybdium so those materials can be used to make the light sources okay that is regarding light source materials okay thank you all thank you